the home colonoscopy kit? Yeah. <laughs> this, this comes with it. You drink this first and then you do the home uh -huh. colonoscopy. I just thought you brought your own uh, booze to a show or well, something. I, <laughs> you I, know, I like to have a good time and uh -huh. I figured I'd share. You couldn't find a larger bottle? <laughs> I, oh, actually, see, I brought this back from Japan. I just got back from Japan did two days ago. I know so you did. You I had this in my it? suitcase. Wow. Traveling yeah. lightly, are you? Absolutely. Um, now, is this to be served cold or warm? You should always serve sake cold. Really? Yes, hot ruins the taste. You always want to drink your sake cold. But they serve it hot at restaurants. Why would they do that? For the, uh, the dumb gaijin. That's me. Foreigners. Yeah. The foreigners. That's me. The foreigners. Well, that's great. So always cold. Always cold. Always drink your sake cold. And is this a good one? I don't know. How do you know about sake? You try and you learn. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know this one? This is a good, try, try some. Uh, no, thank a little you. Little too early. I, no, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a little too early. Um, but <laughs> cigarette? <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. Oh, have you not seen that before? I, j I have been out of the country. I just yeah. got back. I, we yeah. don't, they don't have those in Tokyo. Well, I, I don't think they have them too many places. <laughs> We, we, uh, we found this somewhere and then... What? And it said Ellen on it? That's crazy, Isn't though. that a coincidence? Thank God I have a show, because I, <laughs> I can use it now. Yeah, we, we, we've figured out that we think that this is how cigarettes are smuggled in the country in a donkey's... Um, <laughs> it's a filthy habit, Sarah. See, I, I um, can smuggle it in. I can smuggle cigarettes and, and that's alcohol. Right. Well, thank you for the sake. And, uh, and I have a... Um, hey, I have a little sake for you, too. <laughs> Somebody. I don't know why that's there. I saw that earlier, so that's a little sake for you. And again, serve it cold. <laughs> now, so you got back from Japan Friday? Yes. I got back Friday. Now, what I, because I know when I go to New York, the time difference, the jet lag, and, and in Japan, I think it's it's next week now, isn't it? It's, it's sometime I early next year, actually. Uh -huh. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been there. I was filming a movie there for three months, and uh, I just got back, and I'm so confused. I, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh, that's not good. No. I'm, I'm speaking in a different language. Uh -huh. It's a little crazy. Uh, did you learn Japanese? I learned a little bit. I mean, I learned as much as you can pick up. I, the movie that I was doing, it was all Japanese crew, so nobody spoke English. So you had to learn like, whatever you could so you could keep up. That seems like such a hard language to learn. What it's do you not say? easy. <laughs> well, say something to me right now. Uh, let's see. At the end of the day when you finish working, uh -huh. you would say to someone, Otsukere sama deshita, mm -hmm. which literally means thank you for getting tired with me. With a literal translation of what you say. Is that what people say to each other? Thank you for getting tired with me? Let's get a Uh huh. Well, there's no need to yell at me. <laughs> hey, do they do that in the, um, in the sushi restaurants when you walk in there? Do they go, Venise! Do they scream at you like that? Ishiwase! Yeah. Welcome to my store. Is that what they say? Welcome to my store. Do they say that in all the stores or just everywhere? Sit? Restaurants, really? Everywhere you go, and they yell it. They do yell it. They do that here, and I thought that was just again something to make us feel like you know special, like the hot sake. But <laughs> welcome to my store. So if you walk into a clothing store, they scream at they you too. Mm -hmm. And you just say uh, arigato, thank you. Arigato, I know that. Yeah. Arigato. Or arigato gozaimasu, which would be your if you're being polite. Wow, you're really good. It's getting there. Yeah. I would think that that would be really hard to learn Japanese. It's just a beautiful language in an amazing country, and you just, yeah. you so want to pick it up so you can be able to converse with people. Yes, but I'm not really good at the languages. You've been out of the country, <laughs> and so maybe you haven't seen, but I'm very bad at, at learning language. English is not my strong point either. Uh-huh. No, I think you're doing fine. I'm working on it. <laughs> I've understood everything you've said so far. It's because I haven't had any of the sake yeah, yet. Yeah. That's why you're still understanding All me. right, we'll wait till after the commercial break. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you some of that. Um, and so, and you were eating all Japanese food and stuff when you were there? Oh, I love Japanese food. What like, were you eating? Let's see. Sushi? A lot of sushi, a lot of some very interesting. They have this great fish market, and you go down at like 4 in the morning, and they cut open the fish, and you just eat it right out of there. But my favorite was blowfish. 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 Which is, it's po poisonous. It's completely poisonous. So you have to slice it very, very carefully, but you want to slice it just enough so you get a little bit of poison so that your mouth gets all tingly. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> it, wait, what do you mean? It, it, it's poisonous, but if you slice it just right, you can, and you, you get want a little some, bit of the poison. A little bit of the have, poison. Yes. Mm -hmm. That can't be good. No, it's delicious. Well, then why don't we have it here? Because it's illegal. <laughs> oh, it is illegal. It's illegal here. Because it's poisonous or because it's endangered? Probably because it's poisonous. I don't think it's endangered. I don't think blowfish, is blowfish endangered? I don't think so. Well, I hope we, not. Well, we're all going to be endangered if we eat it. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't believe that people are risking their lives. And you, so if you, if you slice it wrong, do people die from it? Nobody at my dinner table. Okay. <laughs> Nobody right. at my, but I think 
can't afford to eat enough of it because it was so good. So I got a plate and, and the, you know, it's sashimi, so a very little portion. So then I got a second plate of it. And then I was about to order my third plate when um, some of my castmates stopped me due to the fact that it's $85 a plate to have poisonous fish. $85? To have poisonous fish. $85 well, a plate. probably pays for the insurance that the <laughs> restaurant has to cover. <laughs> Quite possibly. Wow. Um, all right. Well, maybe that'll be a recipe that Tony will fix at some point is blowfish. No, thank you. Black I, and, uh, I can't slice it that black well. Black and blowfish. <laughs> all right. We're going to have some sake and try to say black and blowfish three times fast. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back right after this. We're back with Sarah Michelle Geller. And that's a clip from Scooby Doo 2. So. Now, were you a big Scooby-Doo fan growing up? Is that why you were uh, driven to do these movies, or? Driven, yes. Um, no, I was, I was a fan, and I watched it. I think I watched it more as an adult, just for the nostalgia of it, but my mm -hmm. husband has every episode ever done on tape in our basement. Fr Freddie Prince Jr. is your husband. That'd be my you, man. In case you don't, that's your man. <laughs> um, who, uh, that's what he looks like in case you forgot. You were gone for three months. Okay, so he's a huge fan. Yes, big fan. Yeah, and, and you learned everything about Scooby-Doo from him? Pretty much. He sat me down and we watched about 48 hours worth straight of Scooby-Doo. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out why they run and they never get anywhere. St still yeah. working that one out. <laughs> I'm like, but they don't go anywhere. Do you they just keep going? It's now, the same Now story. you're freaking me out. You're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It makes right. you wonder how they ever solved the mystery because right. they never went anywhere. No, it's, it, you're absolutely right. And or how they fall off the cliff and there's just that poof of smoke and then they get up again. At, well, I do that at home sometimes. I mean, really? that I'm working on. <laughs> I'm working that one out. No, you don't. <laughs> so you filmed the first Scooby-Doo in Australia. Yes. And the second uh, Scooby-Doo 2, as in I like to say. Scooby-Doo 2. I call it Scooby-Doo 2. I like Scooby-Doo 2. Scooby-Doo 2. Yeah. How do you say 2 in uh, Japanese? Ni. Scooby-Doo ni. She was trying to trip me up there. You know, she's going to see how well I know Japanese. Uh -huh. <laughs> you do. You know it very well. Get All right, there. so you sh shot the second one in Canada. Yes. And, uh, and what was that like? You liked that? It was cold. Vancouver, you come from sunny Australia and you go to very cold, rainy Vancouver, but uh, we rented this house and it's so funny when you go on these locations, like you, I finished Buffy on April 16th and I had to be in Canada April 17th. So I didn't have time to find a place to live for seven months. So they basically, they find you these houses and they show us these pictures. It's got this beautiful pool and like the living room, this heated pool, but the house was, you ever see the movie, The Money Pit? Yes. Yeah, that was this house. The movie was actually modeled after this house. Really? Yeah. <laughs> If you ever think of putting a pool in your living room, don't do it. Yeah. It, it leaks <laughs> and drips and it's hot. And this house had this heated pool with no air conditioning in the house and it was all windows. Yeah. Well, the, all of it sounds bad to have a pool in the living room. Yeah, it just, it's, it's not smart. And then you have too much sake and you come home one night, you think it's the couch, boy, you've drowned. Before you know it, you're yeah. in the drink. Uh, it's crazy. Well, we won't do it. No. The literal ending of the house was the roof finally just caved in at the end. Oh, well, yeah. don't go back to, to no. that house. So if you're going to Vancouver, don't rent my house. Uh, uh, or any house that has a pool in it. Yes. All right. <laughs> um, and Scooby-Doo uh, Ni or Scooby-Doo De or Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed opens in theaters this Friday. Brad Paisley is going to perform right after this. Don't go away. Thank you so much. For